Okay. At this point, it would be smart to save your project. And we're going to call this selfie. It's a Photoshop document. You choose where you want to save it. I am saving mine just on my desktop so I have easy access to put it onto my um, Google Drive when I back it up. Okay, next uh, I want to go to my uh, oh, I need to go to my internet. So all I'm doing to switch through these guys is holding down command and pushing tab. I know you guys like to move your windows around. This is more effective. It highlights the one, the app, uh, that you're going to switch to. As long as I hold down command and I just push tab, I just press it each time I'm changing it. So I'm gonna go to my Google Chrome and let's create a new window. <clears throat> And I'm going to, the website I'm going to is color.adobe.com. My purpose for going here is to choose a color harmony. A color, uh, we haven't talked about it in depth in uh, photography class. If you've taken any of my design classes, uh, we cover uh, color theory in depth, but there are certain color harmonies, groups of colors that look good together. And for this uh, image that we're creating, the selfie project, we want to create a, uh, or we want to use a set of colors that works well together. Otherwise, the end result starts looking more like cat throw up or something ridiculous and um, it is not very harmonious. Uh, it doesn't fit together as well. So you can have a monochromatic where it is your base color, red in this case, and tints where you add white, shades where you add gray, or tones where you add tints. No, sorry, tones where you add gray and sh uh, shades where you add black to the color. Triad, three colors evenly spaced, such as your primary colors. Complementary, two colors across from each other. I am not doing a Christmas image, um, but I can grab these wheels and change it so I get more of a complementary. Compound color set. This is also known as a double complement or a um, tetrad um, harmony where you have two complementary colors or four colors evenly spaced on the color wheel. All right. uh, next, shades. This is just base color. It's a monochromatic, but it's the base color adding black to the color, or you can customize your color, or you can explore. Designers, photographers, illustrators all over the world use this, and they create these different uh, color palettes, and they name them things. I want to search selfie and just see what comes up. Look at all these. Under selfie, summer selfie, dark selfie, 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 selfie I bathroom selfie. Hey, mine was taken in the bathroom. I kind of like that actually. Um, so I can look at it. Info, all right. I can see my colors there, not too shabby. Um, or I'm gonna actually go back. And if I wanted to make adjustments, I could edit a copy. 
I'm not crazy about the taupe color, I guess you call it, and the red and violet. Um, so I'm going to keep looking and see if I find something a little bit different. Maybe you don't find anything you like. There's an ice cream selfie, a kitty selfie, the guitar selfie, selfie colors. Wow. There's some awful color harmonies here. What can we use? Botanical selfie, the self-appreciation. Uh, here's another bathroom selfie. So that might work. Dark selfie, I kind of like that dark selfie. So we're gonna edit this copy, all right. So these colors are really dark. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with this one. So what I'm going to do is I need a screenshot of this image. So I'm going to command shift four. And you'll see that my cursor has now turned into uh, crosshairs. I'm going to click and drag out around my um, selection. You hear that uh, shutter noise. That means that it has saved to my desktop. I can go back to Photoshop and uh, by pressing Command Tab, and I want to place that image in there. And really, all I have to do is go to my finder. Under favorites, recents, I can see that image. I can just drag it out. And it's going to place it. Well, it placed it in my... Um, in my... Uh, 16, layer 16, that's all right. And you'll see the X going through it. I need to be able to do other things. I confirm that I've placed it, commit, transform. It's there. I'm going to make one more layer again. Okay, on screenshot, I'm just going to lock it so it doesn't get moved around, okay? It's there and I don't need to worry about it. Okay, moving on, layer one, I click on. I come over here, and actually I'm gonna start here at layer 16. This will be easier. Um, uh, an easier work, uh, workflow. Okay, uh, so, what I need to do is load my save selections one at a time, and I'm going to fill them with color on each of these saved, or on each of these blank layers. So I click on my top blank layer. I'm going to hold down Option, or not Option, sorry. I'm going to hold down Command. If you're on Windows, you're going to hold down Control. And I'm going to, you see how my, when I push Command, my cursor changes from uh, a pointing finger like the sideways like button on Facebook to having a uh, um, marquee or um, square dashed box next to it. And then I click. This loads my save selection. I'm going to click over on the left side at the bottom of my tool uh, toolbar. Uh, the foreground color palette, or palette color, foreground palette color. I click on that once, and I'm going to choose, this is for my 
skin highlights. So I'm going, going to click on this uh, near white. It's kind of a gray color. And uh, you can see my cursor, if I'm inside my color picker, goes from a circle to an arrow, and now it's an eyedropper. And so I'm selecting that color, and no matter what color I choose, and you know, whatever color I click on, that is what is happening. Okay, this gray stuff, don't worry about that. Um, that just means that I am, those things are out of gamut. They won't print whatever color is there. This color will. So I click OK. That color is now loaded into that um, foreground color swatch. And I'm going to Option, Delete. And you see how it fills in that selection all of those selections there. And then I'm going to Command D to deselect. And I click on 15. I'm going to go uh, um, Command click my mouse on uh, my next saved selection. Click on the swatch, the foreground swatch. And I don't have a good mid-tone color. So I'm going to drag this down just a little bit and get a mid-tone color that is similar to this. Actually, I'm going to click here on that blue, and I'm going to just make it a little bit lighter. So I'm still in the same color family, but I have uh, made it a little bit less desaturated, a little bit lighter. I've created a desaturated tint of it. And then I'm going to Option Delete to fill that layer, layer 15. Then I deselect, click on 14, and command click on my next save selection. This one happens to be my skin shadows. So I'm going to go to that darker color and Option Delete and fill that in. And you can see that slowly it is filling in the image. And I'm starting to see those details. So this next one is my glasses and hair. Uh, this time I'm going to go with kind of this darker red and click OK, Option Delete. You'll also start to notice that as these colors overlap, you start getting new um, colors uh, emerging. And we're just going to keep going through. So this is my shirt. I'm on my next. You have to make sure that you do this on each loaded save selection is on a new layer. Okay, so that's my red. That's just barely outside of gamut. I'm not going to worry about that right now. In fact, I'm going to turn off my gamut one under view and off gamut one. There we go. Okay. Option delete fills it in. Command D to deselect, click on layer 11, command click, the phone reflection, All right, click on my color. I'm going to keep with this color, but I'm going to desaturate it and make it brighter. So we're going to bring in this little bit of pink, option delete deselect and you can see some of the details in my face showing up. There's my lips, the edge of my glasses, the bottom of my nose. All right, layer 10. So that was phone reflection. Now we're going to do the LCD and 
Uh, this I want a darker color. So I click OK and Option Delete and it loads it and you can see right there that it is um, starting to get some of those details. Layer 9, triangles in the background and I'm going to go like that. It's a dark green. I'm going to pull it out here a little bit desaturated and a little lighter, or a little more vibrant. And option delete, deselect. So I'm getting kind of a, basically, I'm getting a, uh, uh, a triadic. Uh, color harmony going on, red, green, blue, which is uh, what the uh, primary colors are for light uh, when we're dealing in photography and computer screens. They're not really called primary colors. But. Okay, so that was the triangles. Now, background midtones.